If you're looking for some settings to drastically improve your aim, accuracy, as well as gun skill, you came to the right place. In this video, we're going over the absolute best settings here in Modern Warfare 3. Now, let me know down in the comment section right now, what are your current sensitivity settings? I guarantee you my settings are gonna help you guys improve tenfold. If you guys enjoyed the video, make sure you drop a like on the vid, subscribe to the channel, and those post notifications to stay up to date with any and all settings best class setups, tips and tricks, and any updates that do go live here in Modern Warfare 3 Multiplayer. Let's jump right into it. All right, as you guys can see here, I play with an Xbox Elite controller on PC with one paddle on the back set up for jumping. I'm gonna say this right now, these settings are perfect no matter what controller or what console you guys are playing on, so don't worry about that. Now, for the button layout, even though I play on an Xbox Elite controller, Tactical is going to be the best button layout to use here in Modern Warfare 3 because it's going to remap your crouch and prone button so you can get in and out of cover a lot easier as well as perform a drop shot while still being able to aim down sight. There is no penalty in Modern Warfare 3 performing a drop shot and because of the higher health, it's gonna be imperative that you guys are getting in and out of gunfights at the most amount of health possible so you have the best chance of winning gunfights and staying alive to secure those streaks. So make sure you guys are playing on tactical. All you have to do is press down on your right thumbstick and you can get in and out of cover and perform a drop shot. Now, something else you want to adjust under your settings in Modern Warfare 3, especially if you have trouble hitting targets at longer ranges. Longer range engagements are a little bit harder on this COD because of the increased health. I recommend going to your controller vibration and turning it off. This is a setting that I switched off long ago and it's drastically improved my long range combat capability. I don't want to have any type of stick play, any type of rumble in my controller that could potentially throw me off at those long range engagements. So turn it off, play a couple games, and I can guarantee you, you're not gonna turn it back on. Controllers nowadays even come with the option to remove the vibration rumbles because a lot of people have started to do so. Now, what you also can see here is they've made adjustments within the dead zone setting. Now, luckily here in Modern Warfare 3, I don't have to say that your dead zone setting is something you have to set up because you know, of your controller health, or if you have stick drift, you can actually go ahead and test it yourself. And the game is going to tell you if you have stick drift and it's going to do all the work for you. And that's what I have done as well. So this is a setting that literally the game is going to take care of. And all you have to do is go ahead and just plug up your controller and work with the settings. It's super easy. Now, if you guys are still having trouble figuring out your perfect dead zone setting, I got you guys with a quick tutorial. Now, what you want to do first is obviously have your test stick dead zone turned off before you perform the test. What you want to do is go over to your left trigger and your right trigger and make sure these are set to zero. This is very important because obviously when you're aiming down sight and firing your weapon, you don't want to have any type of input delay. That'd be horrible. So having it at zero is going to be the best option. Now, what you want to do here before you turn on the test is you want to have your left stick minimum switch this to zero. So if you do have any stick drift, the game is going to pick it up. And you also want to switch your right stick minimum, you want to switch this to zero as well. Now, go over to your test dead zone, turn it on, and you just want to simply just flick your right and your left thumbstick. Flick it, you guys can see here, my horizontal axis dead zone is going to be at four, so I need to go ahead and adjust my right thumbstick, because that's what I moved, to a number higher than four. So I'm going to go ahead and set that to five. Now, for my left thumbstick, we're going to do the same thing, flip it, horizontal is going to be at two, so all we're going to do is go ahead and set this to three, and we're going to be good to go for the dead zone settings here. This is going to be very important if you want to go ahead and eliminate stick drift if you have any with your type of controller. I have an Xbox Lee controller. Typically, these are pretty good quality. I've had zero issues with it, so the dead zone setting typically is not going to be as drastic as it would with a different type of controller brand. Now, for the aiming, we're gonna be going ahead and taking a look at the horizontal and vertical stick sensitivity. Now, you guys can see here, I have made an adjustment in my settings. If you guys followed me on Modern Warfare 2, you guys know that I was a huge advocate on playing on the four sensitivity for horizontal, 
between that six window as well now within modern warfare 3 i've actually went ahead and bumped it up to a seven now i've also done the same thing for my vertical sensitivity i've bumped it up from the four five six window to seven if you are feeling a little bit more confident in your long range engagements i'm going to tell you this right now seven sensitivity feels amazing on this game and it's going to allow you to turn on players and still feel like you can maneuver around the map freely but if you are still struggling with long range engagements there's nothing wrong with that i still recommend playing on that four to six window that's going to be the best for beginner players but if you have been improving your aim and accuracy seven is going to feel incredible on this game now to go ahead and help out the sensitivity at longer ranges to help you guys improve your aim accuracy and gun skill the ads multiplayer sensitivity has been reduced from 1 to 0.75 i always go ahead and reduce this when i do play on a higher sensitivity than four again four to six is going to be that ideal window if you're trying to improve your aim accuracy and gun skill and also having this set at 0.75 no matter what sensitivity you guys are playing 77.75 7, is incredible now everything else is going to be the same here i've not made any of the changes here you guys can see here my aim assist response curve type is going to be on standard for me personally i always keep it on standard because they could go ahead and make changes within the sensitivities here in multiplayer and the last thing you want to have happen is waking up one day and figuring out that there was changes made and you have to relearn how to aim and pretty much win gun fights at longer ranges that's why i keep it on standard i will be making an additional video on how you guys can properly set up your ads sensitivity as well as your kind of sensitivity for your controller to maximize the aim assist in this game now what you guys can also see here is i have not made any of the changes under the aiming tab all these are going to be on default there's no need to go ahead and mess with this now target aim assist is obviously going to be turned on if you are on a controller and the aim assist type again is going to be on default for me personally if you need any additional help with the aim assist black ops is going to be a little bit stronger but like i said previously the worst thing you want to have happen is waking up one day and finding out that they made changes but like i said with the higher health on this call of duty if you are struggling at long range engagements Feel free to play on black ops but i still would try to transition back to default just in case they do make some changes again everything else is going to be pretty much the same under the aiming category now for gameplay my automatic tactical sprint is going to be enabled i have this turned on so i can simply get around the map a little bit easier running gun and overall enjoy myself so i personally like to have automatic tactical sprint turned on all this again is going to be pretty much default i have not made any of the changes there are changes to the slide canceling but for me personally i still like being able to dolphin dive so i actually have not went ahead and disabled that but if you guys don't like the dolphin dive you can turn that off in this game as well as you can actually go ahead and turn off the sprinting door bash but in all reality i kind of like to keep it on just in case i need to get out of a sticky situation but again all these are going to be default the only thing that i went ahead and made a change to is i did go ahead and adjust my automatic tactical sprint so i can go ahead and get around the map a little bit easier now under the graphic settings i highly recommend you guys make a change to your field of view this is going to work hand in hand with your controller sensitivity as well as your ads sensitivity here in multiplayer Playing on between the 100 to 120 FOV range is going to be your best bet. And I highly, highly recommend you guys going ahead and playing on the affected ADS field of view. If it's on independent, switch it to affected. This is going to mirror your FOV and it's going to make it feel like you have less visual recoil. Now, they've toned down the visual recoil here in Modern Warfare 3, but if you guys want to make it a lot easier to control recoil in general, I recommend playing on at least a 100 FOV with the affected ADS field of view enabled. Now, weapon field of view, you can guys keep this the same. I personally keep it on default. I've had no issues with this setting equipped. Now, what you also want to do here is you want to make sure your motion blurs are turned off this is mandatory if you do not have the motion blur shut off you are going to have a horrible time 
here in Modern Warfare 3. Your game is going to look fuzzy. It's going to be incredibly difficult to see people at longer ranges. And because this game does have higher health, being able to track targets accurately and obviously being able to see them is going to be super important so make sure all these are turned off i've actually went ahead and turned off my filgram as well because these settings just simply are not necessary but that world and weapon motion blur make sure you guys have these turned off sometimes they're turned on when you do go ahead and boot up the game switch it off immediately you're going to see an immediate improvement to your gameplay 110 percent guarantee it's probably the quickest thing you can do to go ahead and bump up your engagement capability now inverted flashbang i like to go ahead and have this turn on they implemented this setting within modern warfare 2 i've had it on since they went ahead and turned it on so definitely go ahead and switch this to the on position it's going to make it a little bit less annoying if you guys do get flashbang but these are going to be the settings that you want to take a look at under the graphics Obviously, the quality as well as this display settings are going to be pretty much set up to what type of console or PC you're running. Obviously, because I play on PC and I make content, my settings are tailored for myself and obviously being able to record and do everything while gaming. The audio settings are also very important here in Modern Warfare 3 because footsteps are incredibly easy to hear and it's going to be a way that you can pinpoint where enemies are at without having the use of a UAV and trust me you will know firsthand when jumping on the game that the footsteps are quite loud now if you guys are playing on a headset you guys have some type of astro headset turtle beach headset any type of surround sound headset that you guys have purchased in the last five years I highly recommend playing on headphones based boost it's gonna allow you to hear footsteps gunfire and pinpoint where people are at like I said previously without the use of a UAV it's a very nice audio setting to have on. now again everything else is going to be pretty much the same here obviously my master volume is cranked all the way up they don't call me ears for nothing i like to go ahead and hear the footsteps i have like to go ahead and hear gunfights so i can go ahead and determine where i need to rotate where i need to set up and where i need to be in order to stay alive and build up those streaks so make sure you guys go ahead and enable the headphones bass boost and your master volume cranked up if you're up for it now, everything else here, again, is going to be set up pretty much for me. Obviously, I make content, so I have my mic pushed to talk. And sometimes I do go ahead and mute the lobby, depending on what's being said, you know, for obvious reasons. So these settings are going to be pretty much dependent on if you want to be immersed in the trash talk. If you're playing s &D, keep it all the way on. But the most important thing here is make sure your headphones are set up for bass boost. And you also are playing on, you know, maxed out volume with some type of headset or surround sound Sarah system like I said if you bought it within the last five years and then finally for the interface settings the only thing you want to go ahead and make sure you guys have switched over is you want to go over to the HUD and make sure your mini map shape is set up to square now sometimes it glitches out and it's on circle by default square is going to be a way better mini map because it's going to allow you to see more of what's going on on the map and also it's going to be a lot easier to read if you guys want to have a video on how you guys can actually read interpret and predict spawns because spawns were also fixed within the recent update within modern warfare 3 let me know down in the comment section i can make that happen and obviously have the rotation turn on as well but that's going to be all the settings you want to adjust under interface again everything here luckily is good to go by default so there really is no need to go ahead and tinker with any of these settings and that's going to be it these are going to be all of the settings you guys want to go ahead and take a look at in modern warfare 3 before you jump into your first match something you definitely want to make sure like i said previously is under your gameplay settings in order to go ahead and make the game a little bit faster paced have on automatic tactical sprint but for aiming i highly recommend you guys starting off if you have trouble with those long range engagements within that four to six window but if you have been playing on that four to six window and you have been improving with your aim accuracy as well as gun skill you can bump it up to seven obviously you can do the same thing for vertical and make sure you adjust your ads sensitivity and multiplayer to 0.75 here these are going to be some settings that are guaranteed to help you improve your gameplay hope you guys enjoy and if you guys did let me know down in the comment section how you guys are enjoying modern for three if these settings help you guys out and if you guys want to stay up to date with all the content make sure you drop a like on the video subscribe to the channel turn those post notifications hope these help you guys out and i'm gonna catch you guys in the next one deuces